everybody and welcome to the channel. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty and frugal life on a low income here in France. And every Wednesday we open our home and share a midweek money chat with you. Let's take a look at what we're going to talk about today. Every time I go into the supermarket, I am absolutely aware of rising prices. So all of us are having to be super savvy shoppers. We're having to think outside the box. We're having to be creative. And this week, it's all about that. It's about those creative ways we can sometimes step outside the supermarket to save money. So we're not just going to one shop, we might be looking at things differently. So that's what that's about this week. And I love the interaction with all of you. Your sharing and your generosity is extremely heartfelt and we all really, really enjoy it. And it's a learning community. So if I miss anything, if there's anything that you can do differently in your country, in your state, in your county, in your locality, please share say where you are name the stores if you want to it would be really helpful so without further ado let's look at 10 ways that we can really reduce our supermarket spend is really quite a big one and I'm going to do my very best to be as succinct as I possibly can and it's about food saving organizations or food saving apps. Now we all know about Too Good To Go, it's a really good food saving app. There may be supermarkets in your area, vegetable merchants, factories, restaurants, pubs that have signed up for this and they save food and you can go along and buy it for a fraction, I mean a tiny amount of money. There are organizations like this all over the world in one guise or another. When we were in the UK, there was an amazing organization called The Real Junk Food Project and they saved food, food from supermarkets they got bulk amount of food from people like uh, wholesalers and then they were able to start a pop-up shop in a town hall, a scout hut or anywhere like that. So do your research on food saving. Join the organisations and those clubs and social groups in social media. Look out for them. So there's my first point. Look for food saving organisations and food saver apps. You will be able to pick up a box, a bag of food. You'll save it from waste and you'll save a mass of money. The next one and I've been guilty of this because I've been experimental in the past and it's cost me money that I haven't had. And it's please buy for the family that you've got. Only buy the food that your family's going to eat. Don't worry if that means you're repeating meals. Don't worry if you think, well, I should be buying this or I should be buying that. Buy for the family that you've got. And if you're in the supermarket and you see something on offer or it's a really good deal, if you're not going to use it or if you're going to use it reluctantly and nobody's going to like it, it's not going to save you any money at all. one and again I'm going to try and be as succinct as possible and again please if I miss anything please share where you are where you shop and where you can go and it's this buy your supermarket items in unusual places now some people just go to the supermarket but I know 
Here in France, there are items I don't find in the supermarket. Dishwasher tablets. I'll go to somewhere called Action. The nearest places to that in other places might be somewhere like Wilco's or Home Bargains or B&M. You might find those places for buying laundry liquid, dishwasher tablets, far, far cheaper than the supermarket. We lived in Cornwall. You might live in rural areas. You might live in a village. This time of year was where I would go and buy fruit and vegetables from people's doorways and gateways. When I was growing up in the UK and lived in Cornwall, it was not unusual to buy some bit of a sign up in their door that they bought caught too many mackerel. I would know people who'd bought or had too much of something and would sell it. I'm looking through my list here. I know that some of you in some parts of the UK have shared the company shop. I lived in the Southwest. There were items and places I would buy, for example, in Trago food items, um, especially if you've got kids and you're buying things like cookies, buying them from places like Wilco's or buying them from places like Action will save you a ton of money. Um, looking here and here in France, there's an incredible shop. It's all over France and it is called Noz. And there's shops like Noz all over the world. There's market traders like Noz all over the world. They are the people who go and buy end of line stock or overstock and they're selling it on. And often that can be food items. Market traders in the UK will often buy overstock of meat or vegetables and are selling it by the box load. So look for unusual and different places to do your supermarket shopping. One, which is a bit unusual and it might be a bit unique to people living in rural areas is swap, barter and ask. And I'm going to go into some details here. Quite a few people around here have got fruit trees and fruit bushes and vegetable gardens and chickens in their garden and sometimes they just have more of it than they know what to do with. Now, I often help people out and I fix things for them, I sew things for them, I mend clothes for them. Mike's a bit of muscle and a bit of hired help and he's a big strong guy and he goes and moves machines or moves things or helps people. And we're really happy to accept apples, fruit. People have given us apple juice when they've had their apples pressed. People have given us eggs or courgettes or garden produce. So, and another thing to do, if you've got stuff that you're giving away, you're giving away the kids' toys, you're giving away books or things, and you know, don't be afraid to say, you know, if it's coming up to Christmas time, for example, don't be afraid to say, you know, I don't want anything for it, but a nice box of chocolates would be welcome, or a box of garden produce would be welcome. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid as well if you've got neighbours and they've got a big apple tree. You know those apples just fall to the ground. And rock. Don't be afraid to say to them, look, if you don't want the apples, could I have them? Don't be afraid. You know, you if somebody could say no, well, you, you wouldn't have done you any harm. So don't be afraid to help people out, do a bit of bartering and do some swapping. <laughs> save us money and has done for years and years and years and it is seasonal foraging. We all know the usual ones about blackberries don't we but look out for in you're in the UK in particular or you're here in France look out for slows. Slows are the tiny tiny wild plums they are very sharp and very dry and traditionally in the UK people forage handfuls of them and put them in gin with sugar to make a drink for Christmas to make slow gin. But they make a fantastic fruit jelly. 
We also look out for, and we had them in the UK, and we were very lucky to have them near us, the bigger version of that, which was wild damsons. So we looked out for those as well. And wild apples in the UK were called crab apples. They are pretty impossible to eat. They are so tart but they make a fantastic thing called crab apple jelly. You can mix them with blackberries as well to sweeten them to make a bramble jelly. Something else that we then go foraging for every single year are nuts. And here in this part of France, you're falling over them and it's chestnuts and they come in a big prickly case and you need to wear your fireside gloves or some thick, thick gloves to break them open and then roast those chestnuts. And they keep right up until Christmas time. They make them here and they put them in a sweet sauce and then they dry them. So they're like a, like a little sweetie that you keep for Christmas time. And of course, then there are hazelnuts and any other nuts and beech nuts as well, which in the UK I think we call cob nuts. So that, that saves us money every year. We are literally eating jams and jellies and nuts right through to through the winter into Christmas. And it might seem a little bit fickle and silly, but when you think that a decent jar of jam can cost a pound or a euro or even more, and that just going foraging for a few hours here and there can put jam in your cupboard for the year, does save us money and it's an unusual one and I know it's very rural but tell me in your country in your area what do you go foraging for any hunters any fisher people any people who go and put it away in the freezer come on share it with us it's interesting to hear what you do Now, something else that we've been doing for as long as I can remember, which has really saved us money on our supermarket spend, is that we have been using Asian supermarkets. So supermarkets that cater to for Indian food or Chinese food or Asian food in, in general. And we have found them to be such good value. An example would be here in France, if I go and buy lentils or chickpeas or beans, or mung beans, anything like that, they invariably come in a 250 gram bag or a 500 gram bag, and it can be really quite expensive. It's not so popular here, but I can go to the Asian supermarket and I can buy two kilo bags for the price that I would pay for a 250 gram bag in the supermarkets here. Soy sauce comes in tiny bottles. If I go to the Asian supermarket, I can buy a litre for the same price. If I buy things like harina masa, I never know if it's harina masa or masa harina for making tortillas. I just can't find that in regular supermarkets here. But if I go into Asian supermarkets, it's really cheap. And I buy things like chickpea flour, large bags of rice, big packs of spices, multi-packs of noodles, those type of things. And we have been doing this for you. We lived near Plymouth. There were three Asian supermarkets there that we could choose from at any time. And often we'd find things like onions, garlics, um, bok choy and different vegetables and things that we were eating, Chinese cabbage, all of those things way, way cheaper than the supermarket. So if you've got one near you, go and take a look. You might find things that you like that you buy in there and you might find them to be much, much cheaper. Now the next one is obvious and it's about bulk buying. There are things that I will bulk buy and there are things that I won't bulk buy. If you go to stores, like I said earlier, that are not your regular supermarkets, the places that are the discount stores, that are selling items that you would buy from the supermarket, you will often find bathroom tissue much cheaper. You'll often find toiletries, sanitary products, things like nappies, 
baby wipes way cheaper than the supermarket. And if you are using items, then bulk buy. But if you're bulk buying in the supermarket, if something is on offer, make sure that it is something that you are going to use. An example is I've bought things like tin tomatoes. I put tin tomatoes in just about everything. If I see those on offer, you bet I'm gonna bulk buy them. <laughs> Now something else that we can just go and pick up in the supermarket, and if you've got pets, is pet food. Well, you only have to have a couple of cats and a couple of dogs, and you can end up spending an awful lot of money, and it can work out much cheaper to buy it from retailers online. So check out your prices and compare it. Compare the unit price, of course. But we now find that if we buy certain pet food, for example, our two dogs eat grain-free pet food. Uh, we found it was much, much cheaper to buy in bulk and buy it online. So there is an example. Do your research, especially if you've got pets, it can work out much, much cheaper to buy it in bulk and buy it online from specialist pet food retailers. Now there's many non-food items that we buy in supermarkets that can be a very good price and keep your eyes open for that. I keep receipts, I keep records, I know my prices. An example would be things that you use all of the time for your freezers. An example might be Ziploc bags. And in the supermarket, they are often extremely expensive. Aluminium foil is another example. Um, roasting dishes, barbecue sticks, any of those things. They can be really expensive in the supermarket. So look out for those things that are non-food items. Look out for them in the discount stores. Look out for them in Trago. Look out for them in Noz. Look out for them in Action. Home bargains. And this is where I want you to share. Are you in New Zealand? Are you in Australia? Are you in Canada? Are you in any of the states in the US? Where do you go to buy your non-food items that are always cheaper than the supermarket? Come on, share below. The next one applies that if you're prepared to shop around, if you are passing a supermarket on your way home from work, if somewhere is near, from you, near to you or from you and it's in walking distance and you and your husband are walking the dogs at that time of night and one of you can pop in, is do your research of when your store marks down the prices. Now in the UK, it's usually last thing at night and the stores there are often open until 10 o'clock at night and they start marking down the food at a certain time of day. I know some of you were saying that that's not as common as it used to be and you're not finding those prices, but you've got to be savvy. Here in France, the shops do not open late. They might open until six o'clock or seven o'clock and literally shop shuts, staff go home. So it's the morning times that you will see the reduced price food. So I know the shops and where they have the reduced price food. Also in doing your research and knowing this, is know which shops have a reduced price section or reduced price fridges. We know that, so do your research. It can save you quite a bit of money, but I would say you've got to be there at the right time. We hope that you found that interesting or even just useful. I know some of them were regional and every single region, you will have your ways 
of saving money on your supermarket spend. And don't forget, we buy everything from a supermarket, whether it's toiletries or food or pet food. It's our supermarket spend, isn't it? And just as I said earlier, if there's anything I missed, is there anything regional to you? Is there a store that sells marked down food or overstocked food near you, wherever you live, wherever in the world? Come on, share it with all of us. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed it, go on, like the video. Thanks to all the subscribers, old and new, and if you're not a subscriber, come on, join the Frugal family. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.